Yeah, that belt is shredded here. That's not something you want to see on your car. It's Jack with Katie Auto Care. I figured out what's going on with Amy's uh, Jeep. I will get it done and I'll call you. There's just a few 10 millimeter bolts going around here. Here is our old water pump. So clean this really well and I'm gonna show you guys what I use to clean. And I pretty much got it where I want it. Let me get it torqued. So I can hear the air coming out right now. About three miles, so let me make that little trip and uh, we'll see how it does. Alrighty, what's going on guys? I've got a little bit of a different one for you today. I know most of my videos have been kind of just step-by-step -step repairs on just random cars that I've worked on, but I sort of wanted to try a POV, you know, a point of view type of thing. So what I have today is um, I've pulled a, uh, a ticket and hopefully you guys can see that. Um, basically the customer complaint, they dropped it off and they said it's a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, they, it says no power steering, making a rattling noise and the AC quit working. So I'm just gonna kind of go and check it out and see what we find and let's get the car fixed. So looks like it's this one over here. So I don't know, hopefully the camera angle is good and stuff. I'm trying this little deal that I've never used before, so. Okay, so let's see here. Let's see what kind of noise we're talking about here. Push button start. Okay. Oh yeah, there's definitely no power steering. Steering is hard as a brick, okay. And the AC quit working and rattling noise. Okay, that's that sounds to me like a belt broke. Let me see here. Let me open the hood. Actually, let me pull the car up over here. Oh yeah, no power steering. Ugh. Okay. I really should put a floor mat in here too. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Oh, yep. Let me turn this off and I will show you what I'm looking at here. Okay. Yeah, that belt is shredded here. If you guys can see that. Yep. So the next question is why did the belt shred? Okay. I think that's why. Water pump came apart. Well, let me get some of this off here and get a better look. Pop this engine cover off. And, okay, let me get some tools here. What am I gonna need here? Probably eight millimeter, I think. Maybe a 10, probably not. Okay, let's see here. We get this off, back here. And let me get this one. Get the intake boot off. And let's see what we can do here. Okay, now we can get a little bit of a better view here. Let me actually, <laughs> I'll finish removing the last shreds of this belt from the engine. So let me get all this junk out and then gotta get all this out of here. Wow, look at that pulley. Ooh, that thing just, it's like, it, that's funny. Usually when the, uh, when the water pumps fail, the, the bearing inside where the impeller is fails. But in this case, the actual pulley just sheared off. That's, that's just great. That's, that's Chrysler engineering right there. 
try to... Actually, a lot of this belt is wrapped behind the, the uh, power steering too, which I'm not too happy about that. So we'll have to see. Anyway, I'll have to get in there and get all that out. Okay, well, let me um, let me sell them a, a, a water pump and um, go from there for sure. Hey Carla, it's Jack with Katie Auto Care. Hey. hey Jack, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Um, we've figured out what's going on with Amy's uh, Jeep. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, no. So this thing has a broken water pump. So what okay. happened? What happened was the the pulley on the water pump just completely sheared off, and so basically the whole belt and everything just came off and got shredded. So that's she wasn't on the road. She had just come in from all that happened wow yeah that's yeah. actually a very good thing that it happened here yeah so that's why there's there's no ac there's no power steering there's none of that it's because because the belt came off and the reason the belt came off is because the water pump pulley Holy basically shit. just sheared off of it let's do it yeah we'll have you done either toward the end of today or possibly tomorrow morning if that's okay okay yeah that's fine all righty oh. well i will okay. Thank get, you so much. i will get it done and i'll call you Thank you. Bye. So I've ordered the part already. So as soon as it gets here, we will uh, get that on. So let's go ahead and get this thing disassembled. Alrighty, I got to get this Jeep in a bay here. Probably going to have to do it on this first bay right here. This is kind of my bay. Nobody else uses it but me, but I got to get this truck out because I'm waiting on a waiting on a part. Let me get my handy dandy floor mat though. I don't want to get the carpet dirty. Okay. Back this thing out. All right, let's get this Jeep back in the spot here. I don't, I don't think I'll need to raise it up on the lift, so as long as I have it in the spot, I think we'll be okay. Stuff over here. So I'm kind of realizing here, I've been trying to get the pieces of this belt out from behind the power string pulley. And um, yeah, I'm gonna need to figure out how to get that out because it's being a little stubborn. So I started recording the next part and I didn't realize, but uh, my phone storage was full. Golly, so I recorded this whole thing and then it, anyway. So the only thing I did was take off this little deal for the, for the brake vacuum, just two 10 millimeter nuts here. And it was this little guy here I had to take off. So it just mounted under there. I had to undo the connector right here where it connects. And then the little, the little line right here. So anyway, I took this deal off because that way I could get to some of the bolts back there for the water pump. It makes it a little bit easier. And then there was a lot of belt debris kind of right here on the surface of the water pump. So I just sprayed some brake clean and cleaned that off as much as I can. I don't, I don't like it being too dirty where I'm working. Let me just undo these two hoses here. There's some hose pliers here. Try to do this carefully without ripping the hose. Don't want to do that. Okay, new plan. Let me take a pick down in here and try to break this seal free without damaging the hose.
Yeah. Oh, dice, quiere saber si puedes llevar algunas devoluciones, dice. He's saying his, his car is full, that's why. Está bien. Cuando tenga tiempo, dice. La próxima, si tu carro está vacío. All right, let me get this little guy. All right, I think I broke it loose. Now, let me go in with the hose pliers. And I put a couple of drain pans underneath, so hopefully it'll catch all this coolant that's about to come out. Okay, well, that's draining. Let me get the other one here. clamp up. Okay. Let that drain for a minute. Well, most of it went into the drain pan, but, uh, well, about half of it did. Whoops. Yep, that's not something you want to see on your car. There's just a few 10 millimeter bolts going around here. This one, what is this? This looks like a 15. That one looks like a 13. So just a few bolts going around here, going down. So it's really not too bad. Let me get those bolts out. And we'll do the 15. No, it's not a 15. I think it's a 16 actually, if I remember right. Yep. Oh, Chrysler and your 16s. And the rest should be tens, I believe. And let me just go down the line here. Whoops. Fish that out with a magnet before it gets lost forever. Let's see, there's another bolt on this side. little bolt out. Let's see if I can take you guys down and we can see where the other ones are. Just kind of see one under there. And yeah, looks like what, two more back there? Is there one, is there any more? Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple more. There's another one. And that might be it though. Okay, let me try to get these other ones out here. One, two, and I think there's just that one by the crank pulley and I think that one might be the last one, hopefully. See if it comes out. I don't know. Oh, there it comes. Just had to break it loose a little bit. Voila. Here is our old water pump. And I like to keep these bolts kind of in the holes where they go because there's there's different links. There's short bolts and there's longer ones. So I like to kind of keep them where they go. And then I just transfer them over to the new water pump. See, the gasket's still on here, so I don't have to worry about taking the gasket off the engine. But I do need to clean the engine, though. All right, let me take this off real quick. I'll just peel it back. And here's our little plastic impeller, which is uh, probably still good. Just the fact that the uh, pulley is not attached to it anymore. So it's not going to spin anything. All right, let me go. Let's get the engine cleaned up and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right, guys. So anytime you're doing a job like this water pump, you're going to want to clean the engine where the gasket goes. Because if you guys just slap a new water pump and gasket on like this, it's probably going to leak. So clean this really well. And I'm going to show you guys what I use to clean. I just use Scotch-Brite scuffing pads is really all I do, but they work great for something like this. 
Let me show you. I just take a little piece and then I'm going to go all around the whole thing and just knock all this crud, all this corrosion and dirt and rust and all this stuff, knock it off with this. And this is not super, I mean, it's a little bit abrasive, but it's not going to um, compromise the sealing integrity at all. So no worries about that. Okay, so I spent a few minutes cleaning this and I pretty much got it where I want it. And then I took a rag with some brake cleaner and I just kind of wiped it down, get it clean. Um, yeah, so pretty much good to go. I'm gonna get the new water pump on. But actually before I do that and while I have it here, I still need to figure out how to get these last few pieces of the belt out from behind the power string pulley because I was trying to film it earlier before I ran out of space on my phone. But what I was saying was that uh, I was trying to get these pieces out and they're pretty stuck Okay, so I got it, I got it. I just didn't, I didn't get it on camera, but I used a mirror and I looked back there and I figured out which way I needed to pull the belt. But anyway, I got the little, the last piece out. So let me get this thing out of there. I actually had one of these one time. It wasn't a Jeep, but it was some other kind of car where the belt came apart like that. It got wrapped behind the power string pump and it ended up actually puncturing a hole in the seal on the front of the shaft on the power string pump, it started leaking power string fluid. Then we ended up having to replace the power string pump too. But thankfully, I don't think this one got damaged. So we should be okay. Yeah. And what I actually like to do on these, on my new water pump is I like to just lay them side by side and then just transfer the bolts. Keeping in mind that they do have these little rubber guides on, on most of them. So that actually helps to, to keep them in place. These bolts are all different lengths, so I like to just kind of transfer them like this. I mean, they're not that hard to figure out which one goes where, but why make it hard on yourself? Just make it easy. Swap them over one by one like that, and that way you're not sitting there with five different size of bolts wondering which one goes where. All right, let me get this new water pump on there. I'm really glad that that belt uh the pieces of the belt came out of that power steering pump pretty easily because i was worried about it i've had some that that's happened to where it's been such a pain to get all those little pieces of belt out but this one wasn't too bad oh i think i'm hung up on the pulley though on the power steering pump oh i'm stuck on the crank pulley that's what i'm stuck on hang on let me rethink this here Something's still not right. What am I caught up on here? It's probably because I tried to put all the bolts in at the same time. So I'm getting hung up on something. Oh yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's because the bolt over here, it, because it's stuck all the way through, it's catching on the side of the timing cover. It's not letting the water pump slide over enough. There goes a bolt. Let me adjust this one. Okay. All right, we should be good now. Let me snug all these up by hand and I'll look up the torque spec and we'll go from there. So I'm about to go look up the torque spec and I just remembered that I totally forgot to order a serpentine belt for this car. I forgot to sell it on the ticket too. I just completely forgot that this thing actually needs a belt. But no worries, it's only like 25 bucks. I'm not even worried about charging them for it. Um, Anyway, I ordered one, so but while that's on the way, let me get this water pump tight. Okay, so I looked it up. The small bolts are torqued to nine foot-pounds. The one 13 millimeter bolt is torqued to 18 foot-pounds, and that big old 16 millimeter bolt is torqued to 41 foot-pounds. So we got nine, 18, and 41. So let me get it torqued. Oh yeah.
normally if these hoses are dry, you may have to spray some soapy water on the inside of them to get them to slide on, but, but these are already pretty wet, so not going to be a problem. Let me get the little hose, hose number two, and get this one on next. Easy enough to get on. Now for the belt. And what am I going to need here? Let me actually take it off of the water pump. Put it over the compressor. Power steering. Kind of straighten this up here. Now let's see if I can get it over the water pump. Usually you want to get it over the smooth pulley last because if you save one of the grooved pulleys for last it can be a little tricky sometimes to get the belt on so that should be fine right there. And that is I believe routed correctly, yep, 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 seated fully on all the pulleys. Alright, should be good to go. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a spill free funnel here and let's go ahead. Get this radiator cap off. Now we're gonna add some coolant here. And I'm just using some universal coolant. This is not Toyota coolant. This is just a Toyota coolant jug. But anyway, I'm using some universal coolant that is compatible with the, um, with the Mopar stuff. Here's the bleeder valve right here on the thermostat. So let me actually get this opened. And uh, as soon as I get some coolant that starts running out of here, then I know all the air is out. So I can hear the air coming out right now. So let me get that. I can still hear the air coming out. And all my coolant's gone in the funnel now. So here, let me, let me add some more coolant here. Let me open this back up here. And we're still airing out here. Let all the air out. Okay, I ran out of coolant again. Here, let me... The only reason I keep closing this bleeder is because I don't want it to sneak up on me and a bunch of coolant starts spilling out. Let's try again here. There we go. All right, I think we got a lot of the air out. All this coolant that spilled, I need to go ahead and kind of clean that off. So let me go ahead and take this car back to the wash bay and get some of this coolant and all the rest of the belt debris and stuff cleaned out from under there. Before I do that, let me get this little guy back on real quick. All right, now I'm gonna put this little guy on that you were supposed to see me take off earlier, but you didn't because I ran out of camera space on my phone. But anyway, it happens. So, this guy on. It's pretty simple to put on anyway. Just two 10 millimeter nuts. Where is my socket? There we go. Okay. 
So, now let me get this little guy back on. Then the little connector plugged in here. Okay, now I think we're in good shape. So, now let me get it to the wash bay. rest of this stuff put on real quick like air intake temperature sensor reconnected and Chrysler, it's actually Jeep. Dang it. Okay, engine control module had a code. Let me just make sure that the code it had was for that intake temperature sensor. I'm thinking it was because that's what I disconnected. Air intake temperature sensor circuit high. Yeah, that was it. So. We quick erase all these. Uh, there we go. Start the vehicle up. No codes. Oil change due. I guess they're doing about 500 miles. Let me let this thing run and warm up and bleed all the air out. I'll go ahead and switch it to heat. This thing's got dual zones. I'll just put them both to heat. There. All right, so this thing's been running about maybe 15 minutes and the air coming out of the vents is hot, hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, shut it off and let me let this thing cool down a little bit and then I'll go drive it. So yeah, we've bled a lot of air out of here. Let me go ahead and grab some coolant. I'm going to top off the uh, reservoir right here because I think we're low. Yeah, we look really low. So go ahead and grab some coolant here. My, my fake Toyota coolant. And I keep spilling it everywhere. I'm bringing things up recharging. Now, now I gotta take this thing back over to the water hose, spray it off again, because I got coolant all over the place. Okay, so I've let this thing cool down for about half an hour. I put the radiator cap back on. I've checked all the fluids. So let's go and take this thing on a little test drive and make sure that this thing doesn't overheat. From what I understand, what the customer is telling me, I don't think that they drove it too long with the water pump like that. So I don't think they did any damage to the motor blew a head gasket I don't think anything like that happened so well because the belt broke and they couldn't really go anywhere so they pulled right over from what I understand so I think we'll be okay here so I'm gonna do the little loop that we normally do we drive um, right here on the on the feeder road about three miles so let me make that little trip and uh, we'll see how it does so really this thing drives fine I don't have too much concern about this car at all 
I think it'll be fine. Almost back to the shop. Just a little bit more. And right here. Alrighty. Let me get this thing to the wash bay. And I'll let old Byron give it a good wash here before we give it back to the customer. There she is all finished up. We're just gonna get it washed up and then I'll call the customer and they can come get it. So appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you and we'll see you on the next one.